welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, the Australian biotech MedLab is going to be our focus. They use a patented active ingredient technology system called NanoCell to deliver those active ingredients to patients often with unmet needs. With me is their CEO, Dr. Sean Hall. Sean, welcome. Vivian, thank you for having me. Now, a lot of people will know MedLab uh, as uh, for its Australian uh, nutraceuticals business rather than as a biotech, which is how I've described you. I, I know that recently you've divested yourself of that business. So tell me a bit more about that. Are you going to focus now on being a biotech? Um, I think the way you summed it up was quite right. People were confused about who we were and what we do. Uh, and some people attribute us into that whole nutraceutical VMS slot. Other people actually saw the research endeavors that we were doing. The divestment of the Australian consumer business to a company called Pharmacare here allowed us to bring an optic back to the company that we were true biotech. And it made a number of shareholders relook at who we were and what we were doing. And for some of them, it was really the first time they became exposed to either drug candidate work, but more so this delivery platform, NanoCell. So I, I think moving on from that, we have some wonderful formulas in that, that nutraceutical, what we call consumer life science. They are being treated now globally in partnering endeavors. We won't re-enter the, uh, the self-branded uh, space for that. Now tell me a bit more about NanoCell and what it actually does. Uh, in short, it's a delivery platform that enhances either new or existing medicines. When we talk enhancements and we talk delivery platforms, we're talking about a technology that is applied to a drug substance or a molecule that can do a number of things. In our case, we aim for uh, a greater bioavailability profile. That basically means we can give less of a drug and get better efficacy outcomes in a patient, we can reduce patient side effects, we can make the drug a lot more scalable, a lot more portable for the patient. And in work we're doing now, traditional drugs that were hard to swallow, hard to digest, or even needed uh, uh, a syringe to administer it, are now being repurposed into a buckle, which is the uh, interior of the cheek or nasal delivery. Now, I'm presuming the word nano cell means that uh, these are the very, very tiny particles. Nano often means that things change their properties. Is that an issue with this kind of technology? So first and foremost, yes, nano cell is a play on words. It is nanotechnology that we are using. We do generate extremely small particles. And in essence, by generating those particles, it does infiltrate a lot of the body's natural uh, defense mechanisms. So what we have to do is be very careful that we don't overload the platform and a drug that would become uh, toxic or abusive and so forth, but that's handled at a chemistry end pre-manufacture. So you'll find that whatever we do with NanoCell goes through some rather rigorous testing in order to show that it doesn't have an extended toxicity profile. It is safe for use. And if I fast track that forward, here in Australia, we have over the past four or five years probably put out around about 400,000 various units of nanocell, either in trial work or authorized, federalized, compassionate use programs. So we've got a very good sense on the platform what safety looks like. We've got a good understanding of what drugs work really well with it. And then other drugs, we, we just don't want to go there. What kind of compounds are you focusing on at present? And what would you say your, your, your leading contender is? Uh, our lead program would be called Nanobus. Nanobus is both uh, a CBD and a THC equimolar. Basic terms, it's cannabis. We're very careful about how we narrate that because we don't want to be seen as a pot stock. So we have this cannabis formulation that is in the nanocell platform that is going through the rigors of clinical trial and it's uh, headlined towards FDA registration in the near term. And this is where it differs. 
when we look at Nanobus, our earlier work was on uh, uh, very standardized high yield botanicals. But in order to meet that type of discipline required for drug registration, we pivoted to biosynthetic compounds that are 100% plant identifiable. So when we look at cannabis now, on one hand, you can simplify it by saying, oh my God, you know, it's a cannabis product that has a delivery platform and, you know, you're shooting out the lights as far as opioid use is concerned. It's so much more than that. It's, it's a very robust drug. It is highly categorized. It has uh, uh, recognized drug master files around the biosynthetic CBD and THC. Uh, it has a very tight CMC package. And we have clinical evidence now that is sending us extremely strong signals for pain reduction, significant improvements in quality of life, and also opioid sparing. So that's the ability to take patients off their current opioid medication in groups of patients with cancer pain, but our strongest group, our best performers is in cancer bone pain. And you uh, have a compassionate um, program uh, in the Australia. Do you think Correct. that can be replicated in other countries? Presumably it's, it's that passionate, that compassionate program is primarily for cancer bone pain. Yeah, so we, we're very ethical about how we instigate uh, uh, a federalised or an ethical compassionate use. We've been operating in Australia for about two years now, maybe a little bit longer. <clears throat> it is a private script or a patient payable model. And I'm really happy to say we go live in the UK uh, in uh, end of January, start of February next year. So what are we talking? Six weeks. Um, we are expecting to roll into EU4 on or around Easter next year. So that would bring Italy, Germany, France and Spain online. And we are already now working on replicating that in the US in the second half of next calendar. The beauty of compassionate use programs, and you, you have to be very careful how you manage them because it's not a right to commercialize and it's not a right to build data for registration, but it does allow us to get a real world sense of how the, that program is performing in amongst a whole heap of other drugs with a wider patient group. It also gives us a chance to meet and talk with patients and develop key opinion leaders moving forward ahead of uh, our market approval or market access. So it's, it's, a, it's a big topic for us, yes. So what's the timeline uh, looking, timelines looking like for the clinical development of, of Nanobis? Okay, so strictly on the clinical side, we will, uh, we're endeavouring to go uh, first patient in to what would be a, a small bridge to the phase three about mid next year. Phase three, first patient in before next year is out. The phase three at the moment is really only a six week intervention across uh, about 360 patients globally. We believe that we can tackle that within 12 months and still meet our pre-COVID guidance of new drug application to the FDA 2024. In saying that, again, to the UK, the next biggest catalyst for us should be the outcome of UK ethics approval, which we have recently just uh, sat and we are waiting for notification on now. Now, how you've mentioned COVID there, how has COVID impacted your workflow? Because it, it I mean, you, you mentioned you know, it may have changed um, your, your targets, uh, but it's also impacted a lot of clinical trials. Yeah, COVID has been a wild card, right? We have, where we've experienced delays that we couldn't immediately fix has been actually in supply chain. There are certain uh, 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 ingredients or compounds that we use in the structure of the nanocell environment, especially for nanobus, that got delayed. And it was simply because we couldn't get them on a flight or uh, suppliers for US grade material, or sorry, FDA grade material were out of stock. And then the other big one is we have very specific packaging uh, uh, requirements, and those packaging requirements have built, been built on an FDA dossier, so we're not likely to change them. But they were coming out of Germany and France, and they had a three- or four-month delay on delivery. So weirdness where we didn't expect, we knew there'd be issues in the supply chain, but we started competing with hospitals who were buying up uh, uh, types of packaging and so forth. 
Uh, it took a little bit to replicate. I think what we have done in order to try and pick up what we can see that we've lost is we have managed to tweak the clinical program and we will pick up time and speed in that. This point in time, we're probably running anywhere from one to six months off our original trajectory. Finally, and a very exciting news that NanoCell has been granted a patent in the US. Can you tell me a bit more about your current patent portfolio? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, patents are a big thing for us. Uh, I think uh, last count, there's 42 or 43 patents globally. The NanoCell portfolio would represent the largest segment of that. Uh, you're quite right. The US actually granted patent protection four or six weeks ago. The US was the last Western Territory to grant protection to 2036. So it doesn't matter whether we're talking North American markets, European markets, or south of the equator. NanoCell has a 15-year ongoing protection, which is really nice. Uh, they have provided a level of advertising for us to Big Pharma. And as a result of that and the uh, recent Jeffrey's uh, uh, London Healthcare Conference, we have some 40 of, oh, sorry, 40 odd, odd active partnering conversations going. And when we look at that, the vast majority are nanocell, and it could be nanocell with an existing generic medicine, or it could be nanocell with uh, a new chemical uh, entity or an NCE, as they're called. But it's, it's really, really positive. But our point of view, it gives us a very strong asset that we can partner, we can trade, we can sell. But it also speaks to validation as to what the platform is, the uniqueness it offers. You know, and going forward, it will serve us really, really well and it will serve our partners extremely well as well. So really exciting times. I think next year is going to be a very big year. It really does sound like you've got a big year ahead in 2022. Uh, I wish you every success and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.